Welcome to Cycling Inform Cycling Tips. My name's David Heatley, and today I'm interviewing Darren Allen from Bicycle Network. And we're going to start off the interview talking about Darren's involvement and how he got involved with Bicycle Network. So, Darren, what was your reason for getting involved with Bicycle Network? Um, I'd spent 15 years working in building and manufacturing, um, and had got to a point in my career that I wanted to work for an organisation that... Um, like Bicycle Network that, that had um, great events that I could be a part of, um, great projects that I could work on, but, but really um, that, that made a difference, that, that wasn't um, uh, just, just building a taller building or making a bigger stadium. Or um, What I really wanted to make sure was that I was, I was working with uh, uh, an organisation that I was well aligned with and being a, a keen cyclist, um, when the opportunity came up to come and work at Bicycle Network, I, I jumped at it. Fantastic. And what's, what's your role within Bicycle Network? Um, uh, for the last uh, two and a half years, I've been the event manager for uh, Great Vic and the Three Peaks Challenge, but for the last few months, I've been uh, filling in as general manager of events, which has um, been a great opportunity to, uh, to be across all the events that Bicycle Network do. Fantastic. Yeah, well, you guys run some awesome events, <laughs> and I've been on a few of them as well. So, all right, so what are the key messages? What is Bicycle Network? about? Look, it really comes down to physical activity for, um, for us. Um, two-thirds of Australians don't get enough physical activity, um, which is a bit frightening, really. Um, the, the best possible way you can, you can stay fit is, um, is on a bike, and it's something that you can carry through for your entire life. I mean, we all learned to ride as kids when we were, you know, three, four or five, Really enjoyed it in primary school, maybe not so much in high school, um, and then might have picked it back up in later years. And then there's a lot of people that are really enjoying retirement and cycling as well. So it's something you can carry through for your whole life. Um, the other good thing about cycling is that you can use it as a form of exercise and your commute. Um, people say they don't have enough time these days. Oh, I don't have enough time to go to the gym or stay fit and you know, time poor, um, family commitments. But if you use that time that you would normally commute to work on a train or a bus or by car, on a bike, you're really getting the, the best of both worlds. You, you get to, to ride to work, stay fit. Chances are you might even do it quicker than you would on the train anyway once you get fit enough. So um, it's just, I suppose it's a simple way of staying fit. Yeah, and look, Melbourne's a fantastic city for doing that, isn't it? I mean, we've got some awesome infrastructure for cyclists. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, the the uh, the bike paths to get I- into yeah. Melbourne, but even when you go out regionally as well, um, the rail trails and um, just shoulders on, on you know, uh, high volume roads that you can you can get from uh, place to place um, quickly and, and and feel protected as well that you've got your own space to ride in. Yeah. So um, Bicycle Network also offers a voice for cyclists, doesn't it? You do a lot of work behind the scenes on helping uh, engage council into doing that sort of stuff, into building more infrastructure for cyclists, don't you? Yeah, yeah, look, there's, there's quite a few programs that we, we uh, head up, um, including the, the Bike Futures Conference, which uh, councils come along and have a look at what um, the future of cycling and infrastructure is there. Um, the bike counts that we do, Super Tuesday and Super Sunday, gathering the data for councils to be able to help make that decision. And then um, at, uh, at, at state and federal level, being able to give um, the advice um, and, and, and the evidence to show that, that putting in bicycle infrastructure really does make a difference. The, the trains are full, the trams are full, the roads are full. Um, we've got to find better ways to, to get around. And we know that you know, for, for a relatively low spend to put in a, a, a bike lane on a road, it, it's so much um, more efficient than, than putting in new roads, tunnels, bridges, that side of things. Um, and the flow-on effects that come with it. I mean, councils see that uh, when people are healthier, they're happier, less people in hospitals with preventable diseases. I mean, that, that's, that's the, the real frightening thing, is that a little bit of physical activity helps with those preventable diseases. Um, it, just, it just works across the board. Oh, yeah. And I'm a big fan of that. I mean, you know, the, the body's designed to move. So, you know, it's, it's like, you know, here we are sitting in cars, watching TV... Uh, sitting at desk all day, it's just fantastic to be able to introduce something into your day that's yeah. easy to do, that um, that you can move around and you know and, and get happening. So, tell me, um, Bicycle Network. You also have a membership. You have um, 
you offer membership to your clients. Yeah. Well. So what's what's that all about? Well, that's pretty much the, the foundation of the organisation. I mean, it's we're, we're self-funded, so we don't um, we're not part of uh, any uh, government agency or anything along those lines. Completely self-funded um, health promotion charity. So, with uh, almost fifty thousand members, um, that that's we're, we're the voice of, of, of cycling in, in, in Australia. I mean, it's um, uh, it's the largest cycling group um, of its type, and it. Um, it, it provides um, real clout yeah. for, for those 50,000 members that, 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 that are a part of Bicycle yeah. Network. Yeah. Um, we can be their voice. Yes, and, uh, and along with that, you also provide insurance? Yeah, yeah, so there's a, a crash cover and support yeah. that comes with that, um, as well as plenty of rider information and, and deals for our members. Um, but as we spoke about earlier, it's really about improving riding conditions yeah. um, for all cyclists. Yeah. I mean, your tagline is more people on more bikes more often. That's, yeah. That's what it's about, really. Yeah. And just a, bit, a little bit of a history around Bicycle Network. Do, do you know when it was founded? Uh, yeah, it was a bit over 30 years ago. I think around about 1975, there's about... Um, it was uh, it, it was formed, but it really started to get its clout um, in in later years. Sort of yeah. in the in the early 80s, it really started to pick up. Um, so it's been around for a long time in Victoria, especially, and it obviously it used to be called Bicycle Victoria. Yes. Um, but it's expanded a lot further than that now. So as a as a national organisation, yeah. um, we go by the name of Bicycle Network now. But um, yeah, look, back in the early days, it was um, a handful of. Uh, keen cyclists, volunteers yeah. um, that, that wanted to make a difference, that wanted to improve the organisation. Yeah. Um, probably the hallmark for, the, uh, for Bicycle Victoria back then was when the, the Great Vic got up back in 1983, I think. Right. Um, so it's just celebrated its 30 years. Um, that was a, a real pivotal moment for the organisation. Yeah. Um, they organised a small ride. All of a sudden, 2,000 people turned up. Um, and it's grown from strength to strength from there just on. Incredible. Yeah. yeah, just amazing. Well, we'll talk a little bit about events later on, but I just wanted to um, cover off some of the some of the things that that people could see from an infrastructure point of view that you've been involved in getting across the line with council. Is there any sort of key things in recent years that, that you can really say? Well, we really made a big difference in getting that sorted out. Probably the biggest one is is Darabin Bridge. I mean, the organisation has been. Um, been working on getting that um, sorted out now for, I believe, more than 20 years. Yeah. And, and um, the local councils and the, and the, the state government have, have got behind it and it's, and it's going to happen. So it's fantastic. Um, the, the steps on um, uh, the main Yarra Trail, that, yeah. so you're riding along yeah, and all of a sudden you've got to climb up four flights of stairs. Yeah. So that, that's another... Uh, um, uh, Big project we've been working on for a long time to get to get those all those things to connect yeah. as uh, as uh, uh, that, that, it's going to make all the difference. Like so that it's not clunky, that it's smooth, that it's a, a um, it's usable. the quickest way to, to get around. Yeah, that's, that's right. Usable. Very yeah. usable. That's yeah. right. And when you talk about the, the voice for for local council and government, I mean, with such a, a large membership base. That becomes really important when those organisations are looking for organisations that they can start dealing with that understand yeah. the cyclists. So, so that's really important as well, isn't it? Yeah, look, and it's great. And especially in Victoria, we're really seen as that... Um, uh, that the, the, yeah, the right people to speak to when it comes to what should we do about our bike infrastructure? Yeah. Um, what can we do to make improvements? And it's fantastic because we've been working for so long with these councils and, and with the, with the, um, the governments. Yeah. Um, they, they see the work, they see the results at yeah. the other end of it, yeah. that it works. Yeah. Um, I suppose another great project we've, we've helped um, get along is, is the rail trail system out in regional Victoria. Right. So we're not yeah. just about Melbourne. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, out your way in yeah. Mansfield, there's Mansfield. been some great developments Huge there. Developments. The, the Great Victorian Rail Trail. Yep. Um, yeah. So you, you have a look at out there, it's connecting these little regional towns so that you can go, go to wineries, go to great... Um, see great um, sites, tourist attractions, all that sort of thing. It can be part, not only uh, of your day-to-day life commuting to work, yeah. but when you go on holidays, you can yeah. go for a pedal with the kids or the family and, and go and enjoy the countryside. Oh, yeah, and the rail trails are very safe. You know, they're mm. just awesome safe places for cyclists. They remove them from the main traffic. Yeah. Uh, you know, certainly the main road out of um, Mansfield is, is a very busy road, um, and right next door to it is the rail trail. 
there. Which and gives you access to all that regional area. I know the government spent thousands of pounds, thousands of dollars on it, yeah. um, putting it together, and it's a fantastic resource. It's available to us now. So, so getting those funds allocated to projects like that, we put together the evidence that say this will work, yeah. and and then the, the the best thing for us is when. Uh, you know, people are just using it and, it and and all of a sudden it's got to be upgraded or it's got to be extended, you know, like because too many people are on it. I mean, it's fantastic. That sort of stuff, it, 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 uh, it really makes a difference. Yeah, that's what we want to see, you know. Okay, so let's, let's talk about events. And that's really the other area that I think a lot of people have seen uh, visibility with what you people are doing is... Possibly, uh, you know, around the bay in the day would probably be one of your biggest events. So, yeah. how many how many people rock up to around the bay in the day? Oh, look, it it it, it started off um, already in thousands. It wasn't this thing that sort of started with just a couple of hundred people. No. Um, when it was launched 21 years ago, um, thousands wanted to take it on, yeah. and and since then um, it's maintained around the 15,000 every year. 15,000. So, you know, when you do the quick sums, it's hundreds of thousands of people have been yeah. on around the bay, and, and whether it's um, on one of the shorter distances or on the on the long distance, yeah. like the, the 210s and the 250s, yeah. um, the idea of riding completely around Port Phillip Bay is, is fantastic. Yeah. Um, you get the, the, the seaside, obviously, the bay, the experience of going across on the ferry with 650 other cyclists yeah. Yeah. Um, on the ferry, um, the rest stops along the way so that you can you can make it and the support that you get from Bicycle Network. So when we work with Vic Roads, we work with Victoria Police, Ambulance Victoria, yeah. all these guys so that uh, cyclists can take on something that they wouldn't normally do. do. Yeah. yeah, in a supportive environment. Yeah. 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 It's safe and it's fantastic, and it's been really successful. Like uh, it gets booked out, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's there's there's, there's quite a few um, rides that, that sell out very quickly. Yep. Um, the, the popular um, two tens, mm. um, but but of course there's a uh, there's a ride distance for everyone. If you're just starting out cycling or you want to go out with with young kids, you can do the twenty k, the fifty k, the hundred. Um, and it doesn't matter where you want to start as well. You can you can start in in Sorrento in the city. Um, out at uh, uh, Geelong, it, it's it's fantastic. So there's there's opportunities for everyone to be involved in it. Um, the other good thing with uh, around the bay is that unique experience of being able to go over the Westgate Bridge. Um, pretty exciting, especially if you're finishing coming up over the Westgate. You've come all the way up from Geelong. You've done your 200 k's. You've only got 10 to go, and you're faced with the Westgate Bridge. Um, it's, a, it's an incredible achievement for people. Yeah. They come into Alex Gardens at the end yeah. of it just so pumped, so proud of themselves. And for a lot of people, it's something that they just couldn't ever imagine they would have been able to do. Yeah, you know, and look, I mean, it's, it's one of those events that's really a bucket list, you know, ticking the box sort of events. Everybody that's, you know, into cycling sees it as something that they want to either build up to or, or do. Oh, it's a, it's a rite of passage for a lot of, lot of cyclists before... Um, we're finding that, that cyclists are, are moving through that, that yeah. um, uh, a, a, as you look at... Progression. Yeah, as they progress, that's yeah. right. So probably 20 years ago when Around the Bay was invented, that was about the pinnacle of Victorian cycling. Like, yeah. as far as if you were able to do 250 k's around the bay, you were a, yeah. an absolute... Um, top. Star. Yeah. <laughs> where, where these days, it's now just a rite of passage. Like, yes. you get into cycling, and within a year or two, yeah. um, you're taking on Around the Bay. Mm. Um, it's incredible. And when we celebrated our 20th year, which wasn't last year, the year before, um, we celebrated our legends. So these are the guys that have ridden every single around the bay. It's incredible, isn't it? Um, so, you know, the, the lineup at the start of that year, we had almost 17,000 riders that year for the 20th anniversary. And here's the legends, the guys that have supported us from day one. And uh, it's Absolutely incredible. Every single one. Yeah. yeah. Rain, hail, shine. Yeah, it's fantastic. And the great thing about that is that like, I know in the build-up to the Round the Bay, there's just a whole lot more riders out on the road training for it. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not only, it's just not only a one-day event, but people are getting out on their bikes, riding their bikes, getting fit. For yeah. The, and it's been, you know, from a cycle coaching point of view, it's been fantastic being involved and helping assist people with that with the programs that we've been putting out and, and, our, and our training packs. So that's been really good as well. And I think it's added some value. Yeah. To, to what we've been doing. And I know that we get a lot of feedback from people saying, yeah, that program is fantastic and I really loved it. And, well, that's yeah. a good thing about an event is that you, um, it gives you something to focus on. So if people get a goal and if they have a, a, a public goal, like if they put it out on Facebook or they're telling their friends, hey, I've entered in around the bay, yeah. um, 
it's they're, they're so much more likely to actually follow through and do it. Yeah. So it's one of those things that if you build up to an event itself, yeah. um, you actually do the training, you actually um, yeah. complete it. So it's, it's, it's quite exciting when, when um, people say, I've signed up, I'm going to do it. And there's a little bit of nervous energy, but they know they're in. Yeah, it's fantastic. So um, Great Victorian Bike Ride. Now, I had the fantastic opportunity <laughs> of doing the Great Victorian Bike Ride last year for the first time. And I know you've been hounding me to come along and do it for a couple of years, and I know it's impacted on um, any previous I've had other commitments around uh, other events that we were doing, but I made the decision that I wanted to do it. Yep. And I had the best time. Ten days of yeah. riding my bike, camping up. What an experience. Um, you know, and just the log- logistics around uh, Great Victorian. I mean, I'm just, I was just mouth open. You know, I mean, how many people do you get along to the Great Victorian bike ride? Oh, it's an incredible event, and I got to admit, it was good to see you on the on the first day when you quite literally were going, "How does this work? And why haven't I come on this before?" Um, we get um, usually between four to five thousand people come on the, on the Great Vic each year. Um, uh, there's around about 400 volunteers that yeah. um, incredibly dedicated that come on the event. Yeah, Many have done it for a lot of years. Awesome. Um, as well as we have um, professional staff and contractors that come along as well. So it's quite a big operation. There's probably around about 600 or so um, operational crew. Mm. Um, and they're working... Uh, we usually have three active sites. So the one that's actually got the riders in it, yep. they're still packing up the old one, yep. and they're getting ready with the next one, and it just leapfrogs along. Um, and that's the exciting thing about the Great Vic. I'm a real sucker for it. It was the first project I worked on yeah. when I came to Bicycle Network. Um, I, like yourself, I had never been on it before. Yeah. I, um, I was aware of it, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't something that I'd participated in or yeah. sort of really had given too much thought to. And then you get to it and go, this is incredible. Watching is awesome. um, uh, just how it seamlessly... Um, Behind the scenes, yeah, it unfolds in front of you. Yeah, but to, to serve um, to serve food to that amount of people, yep. so um, quite literally in two hours we serve. Yeah. Like last year, we served five thousand two hundred people in two, in two hours. hours. Yeah. Um, they get good nutritional yep. meals, and thank you for your input yep. on that. Um, Cycling Inform, who help us out with that. Yep. Um, um, and then you have a look at the toilets, showers, water, yep. first aid, and that's just in the campsite. Then you yep. get out on route. Right. So we've yep. got um, Victoria Police out there with us and Vic Roads, um, making sure that the roads, you know, some of these roads would be lucky to see five cyclists a year, let alone 5,000 in a couple of hours. Yep. So that's a real challenge, and we work really closely with the communities as well yep. um, along the way and at the, at the campsites. Um, that really do make the riders feel like celebrity. When they, yeah, when they oh, come into yeah, town, um, they, when, when the towns turn it on, that's when it really, really works. Yeah. Um, and the, the mix of people on the Great Vic is really an interesting dynamic as well. We've got 1,200 or so school kids that yeah. are on their, their Year 9 camp. Um, we've got people that are close to retirement age and retirement age, yep. like, and that, that's probably um, a, an equal mix, probably about 1,200 of, of, of people in the sort of 55 plus. And then everything in between. Yeah. Um, so whether you're keen to, you know, get up in the morning and do as many Ks as you can and then, you know, get in the cafe latte set, yeah. or whether you're more interested in stop and having a look at um, souvenirs along the way, if you want to have a couple of beers at night, it, it's, it's really just yeah. suited for yeah. anyone and everyone. It's, oh, yeah. it's an incredible event. Look, and you arrive at campsite and there's just like endless stuff to do because you've got entertainment as well. Um, I know I got involved in doing the stretching classes and running a few seminars, which is fantastic. I love that. Um, and, and I must admit, I mean, for the entire time I was there, everybody, you know, like, there were people just coming up to me all the time, thanking me for the programs and for the videos we put out on, you know, getting your bike sorted out, ready for the event and those sort of things. But, but um, you know, you've got uh, movies running in the evenings. You've got uh, the... Um, the rider briefings and stuff going on. What, what sort of other stuff have you got at the campsite? Oh, we had an interesting one last year. Our head chef came out and did an, uh, an, an ice right. sculpture. Yes. So he got this huge block of ice and he sculpted out this, um, this great, uh, uh, I think it was a fish. Yeah. Um, um, but there's, there's a lot of that entertainment. We have roving entertainers as well, so musicians that musicians are walking yes. around that, that, that um, you know, when you've got 5,000 people, you do tend to have to queue up from time to time for yep. toilets, showers and food. So we make sure that people are entertained yep. during the boring stuff. Yeah. Um, you said the, the movies at night, but we also, and, and the bands that we have on, yeah. 
Um, it was the, an 80s the, night. Oh, the last the night was night fantastic. Was just awesome. <laughs> like, that that totally band, reliving. afterwards, that band said to us, we've never had a gig like this before. Like, they, just... they couldn't believe... Um, they had so much fun with it. Yeah. Um, and the talent night as well is always pretty funny. So... Um, so, no, somehow, somehow people bring along guitars in the Great Vic. I don't know how they manage to get it in their bags, but yeah. um, and they get up and they sing a song and have a bit of fun. Um, the, the the activities that we have as well. So you can just grab a, a, a deck of cards and sit down with complete strangers and say, well, who wants to play five hundred? Like it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's 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 a lot of fun. And the, the the really good thing about Great Vic is that for a lot of people. Late November, early December is just chaos. Yeah. Like, there's no way they could take a week off. Yeah. But here they are. Here's 5,000 people yeah. that go, you know what? I'm putting all that on, on, on hold for just a week. I'm going to go for a pedal. I'm going to forget about my phone. I'm going to forget about emails. I'm going to go for a pedal. I'm going to have a beer. I'm going to camp with some friends. I'm going to meet some new friends. Yeah. And I'm going to come out the other side of it fitter. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, what more could you, you know, ask for? I mean, you, you're telling my life story in the lead up to it because I'm running around with my pants on fire. We've, we've just recently moved to Mansfield around that time and we were doing renovations and uh, we're running the business. Very, very busy time. And I said, no, no, look, I need to train from the Three Peaks. Mm. And it was mm. like 10 days on the bike just riding. Yep. And for me, it was just an awesome opportunity just to get away from it and just focus 10 days on starting out my training for the Three Peaks and it was, yeah. it was the best thing I ever did and I wouldn't have gotten any, any length of that amount of riding in without going to... Yeah, and, and, and surprisingly the world kept turning with you not being at your desk, didn't <laughs> yeah. it? So, I mean, that, that's the, the good thing and when yeah. you, as, I said, as I said earlier, when you, when you commit to something like one of oh, our yeah. events it just happens and, you. and you actually do it, everyone comes out the other side of it going, that's fantastic and, and we have so many people that come on the Great Vic every year, like yeah. they just wouldn't yeah. That's the oh, holiday. Yeah. The camaraderie on that event is, regardless of what type of cyclist you are, yeah. just awesome. You know, it was just it was just fantastic, and people from all walks of life just absolutely loving riding the bike, getting out and getting a bit fat. Yeah, and that's um, what the volunteers really get out of it yeah. as well, getting that recognition from um, from the riders. You know, just that quick thanks, Volley, for yeah. for, for for serving dinner or for oh, yeah. for marking a corner for yeah. them. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's incredible. Like uh, it. it restores your faith in everything like you you come out of it going you know what things are pretty good yeah you know and you just it's just a fantastic feeling and that camaraderie that just flows through the whole thing you were the great bunch of people for 10 days I just thought it was great even the bus trip down there (laughs) it's good fun you know I mean I talk non-stop to people it's just you know I thought oh yeah I'll just get out my notebook and start working it was like no we're all just sharing the passion for cycling and the passion for living really it was just Mm. it was just awesome and you you just make some great friends, so so I really I really enjoy it. Yeah. So then you raised the bar, didn't you? <laughs> you know, it's like you weren't weren't just happy with around the bay and the Great Victorian bike ride. You decided to put together what I consider to be one of the best nastiest events <laughs> <laughs> on the entire if, you know the entire recreational scene in Australia, let alone probably the world. And you caught it three peaks, didn't you? Yeah. Look, when they when when Vic Rhodes um, sealed the final part of that was, that 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 route around the back of uh, Falls Creek, Falls there, Creek. It kind of just opened it up. <laughs> right. It was, like... it was on. Um, and and being 235k loop, um, 4,000 vertical meters, um, the spectacular hills through there, yeah. the remoteness of the country. It's just, it's a. Um, it's very exciting. Like yeah. we, we've we've said for for five years now, it's the toughest single day cycling event in Australia. I would agree with you on that. And no one's yeah. argued it with us. Yeah. Um, for a lot of people, they go, "Oh yeah, look, I think I'll be right. I can do uh, I can do those sort of Ks, and I can I can climb a hill." Yeah. Um, the the best thing I think about the Three Peaks Challenge is you, you've done your two hundred Ks. You're at the bottom of Falls Creek in no man's land. And you're faced with one of the most punishing climbs that you will ever see. It is a piece of work. And, you know, when I talk to people about it, we call it WTF. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what that means. You'll be able to figure it out. But everybody, everything that everybody says about that corner is absolutely true. And look, some cyclists play things down and some cyclists make things a little bit bigger than they are. Whatever stories you get coming out of that hill yeah. is absolutely true. I remember, because I did it, Three, three years ago I remember getting going around that corner I knew it was coming up the first hour I did 9 kilometres of that yeah. 
nine kilometres in the first hour. That's how nasty it is. So, you know, and we've got a road called Old Tomley Road in Mansfield that I've been training on <laughs> since I've gotten there. That's about the same sort of gradient, but it's only half as long as the first section of that climb. Yeah. And um, that's really been helpful for me, <laughs> at least mentally getting my head around the fact that we're going to, after 200 kilometres, I'm going to be hitting that climb. Yeah. So for me, it's really important that I'm in good condition to get onto that. But tell us about Three Peaks. Apart from that climb, it's an awesome event, isn't it? You've been running yeah. it for how many years now? Um, I've been running it for, for three years. Um, and uh, we, uh, and, and that was around about the time that it really started to find its stride. Yeah. So um, there used to be a half distance to, to dinner yeah, plane. We went, you know, you know what? Yeah. This isn't what this is about. This, this isn't a ride for everyone. No, it's not. This is for, 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 for people that, that are really serious about their riding. Um, there's cut-off times. Yep. If you don't make it to a certain point by a certain time, regardless of whether it's yep. mechanical, um, you know, yep. uh, uh, due to any circumstance, yep. you're out. Yep. Um, and the good thing for that is we've got the, the Lantern Rouge. So the last rider, the man in red, um, quite literally, he's, he sets the pace for if you fall behind him, you're out. Yeah. Um, the good thing, though, is we've got a pro team that ride around as well. So if you reckon you can do it in eight hours, then you stick with this guy. Yeah. If you reckon you can do it in nine, stay with, with, with this person. And it, and it goes along like that. Yeah. So um, the pace setters uh, really do make a difference. Yeah, they do. Um, closed roads make a huge difference as well yeah. because what we want to be able to do is make sure that people um, feel, feel safe to be able to, to, to take on a challenge like this. And, sure. and it's... Um, uh, so the descent of Falls Creek, Tawonga Gap climb and descent, and the final climb of, um, of Falls Creek on closed roads. Yeah. It makes all the difference. Yeah. It just makes it really, really safe. It's, it's such a fantastic event. You know, for me, uh, you wake up in the morning, you're at the village, you wake up in the morning, you're on the start line... 6, 6.45 they take off. Yep. right? It's kind of... The, the dawn is breaking... And you descend off Falls Creek. Sorry, yeah, you descend yeah. off Falls Creek through Tawonga, uh, through Tawonga over Tawonga, uh, and then you head on up the valley to do Hotham, which is a is an epic climb in itself. I mean, yeah. Hotham's just a nasty piece of work. Yeah, uh, it's you know it's um, not only is it. I mean, the gradient in the middle of it's okay, but you leading up to it, and then at the end of it, it just it's just it's just a nasty climb. You come off that, it's fairly soft through dinner plane. Great for lunch. Yep, and you're in, incredibly exposed through that hill as well. Oh, so, yeah. um, depending on whether, what the weather does to you, if it's yeah. if it's hot, you're going to know about it. If it's cold, it's you're going to know about it. About it. You know, and that's, yeah. you know and as, as you come through the toll gates on Hotham, and we, we just recently did that in our boot camp. Um, you know, it just opens up, and since I've had the fires come through that area, it's even more exposed yeah. um, through the lower ends of it. So. Yes, and then, then you cruise along the valley through Omeo, um, up around the Spurs, and then you get to WTF Corner. And then at that point there, you really have... It's just really important that you've looked after yourself. Yeah. And then you get onto the climb, the big climb back up to Falls Creek, and it's 37 kilometres? Round about, round yeah. About. And the first part of it, the first 12 kilometres, is, is, is around about 10, 12, pitching up into some nasty mm. percentages of the climb, and it's... It's quite a challenge. And I, I know going up it, there's signs all the way up just encouraging you along, isn't it? <laughs> That's just beautiful. It's like I wasn't expecting that when I did it for the first time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, it's, it, it is one of those things that, that um, you've, you've got to, as I said, you've, you've got the cut-off times and that, but you've, you've got to do it within 13 hours. Yeah. And for these guys that just make it, mm. uh, I truly sympathise with them because oh. they have done it the hardest. That's They're out hard. there and... Um, Perhaps this goal was almost out of their reach, but they just make it. So when, when the riders come into Falls Creek um, and they get their finisher jersey, um, a lot of guys don't even wear it. They frame it. Like it, It's that whole, they've worked so hard to get to this point because they've been cycling their whole lives, but they were never a climber. Or perhaps they used to ride mountain bikes and they're not bad at the climbing, but they could never do the distance. And when you put those two together, plus time constraints... Um, in a mass participation ride, I mean, this year we'll have almost 2,000 riders. Um, it's sold out this year yeah, for the first time. For the first year. Um, so it's uh, and and it's got such popularity now, yeah. um, and it, and it is without a doubt a, a, a must do. And the good thing is, is it, it's not only Victorians. I mean, yes. almost 
I think it's 50% yeah. on average come from interstate, with probably around about 40% coming from um, New South Wales. So, yeah. um, you know, that makes a pretty big weekend. I mean, it's a four-day weekend to go cycling for, you know, 10, 11, 12 hours. Yeah. Um, Falls Creek, an incredible village. Most people know it for, yeah. for skiing. But yeah. in summertime, it is incredible. Yeah. It's great mountain biking up there. Um, as well as, you know, lots of recreational riding. But you, you can go up there, stay up there at Christmas, go for a pedal either side of the hill. It's a fantastic place. It's awesome. We love it. We love running our big camp around that area. Mm. We've been down big camp since 2007 in the area. And I know that uh, you approached us to help us with the, with the training for it because it's one of those events that people need to be prepared for. They can't just rock up to it and ride it. You've actually got to train for it, even to, just to do the, the sub-13. Now, you've yeah. got another category, the yeah. sub-10. Yeah, that's right. Just to make it even harder. Well, look, once again, we wanted to make sure that the appeal was there for these guys that are absolutely putting in the real hard yards, um, that want to be recognised yeah. for being, you know, quite literally in, 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 the, in the top couple of hundred riders yeah. out, out in the recreational riding scene. So if you can do three peaks in under 10 hours, you are a hero, you are a legend. Yeah. If you can even consider taking on the event and finishing it at all, yeah. you're an incredible cyclist. So... Yeah. Um, it's one of those things we really like to recognise those guys that are absolutely putting in the hard yards. I, I remember last year one of our um, pro team riders did uh, 60,000 vertical metres in his training leading up to three peaks. Yeah. 60,000 vertical metres. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's obscene. 60,000, yeah. Uh, Just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say to that? What do you say to that? Yep. Anyway, OK, so... Um, Newcastle Challenge. Now, this is a new mm. event for you, isn't it? It is. Um, and our, our first uh, single-day event um, uh, that, that's going to be um, an annual event yep. um, in, uh, in interstate. Interstate, so, New South Wales. Yeah. Now, you've run events outside of Victoria, haven't you? Yeah, With the absolutely. Victorian bike ride? Yeah, and the Escapade as well, yep. um, as, as well as um, other rides back in the early days right, um, okay. of, of Bicycle, Network, uh, Bicycle Victoria days. Yeah. Um, but the demand was there from New South Wales. Yeah. This is the thing. The cyclists um, and, and the riding scene in New South Wales um, is aching for more mass participation yes. events. Yep. And they um, really need it. I mean, it's, it's going to really help cycling and the visibility of cycling in New South Wales as well. Yeah. I, think, I think New South Wales riders really get, you know, a, a bad run. You know, I think, I think it's going to really help. Well, this, this is like the thing. Way. I mean... Um, but it, it's a it's a it's a tough state to get something in uh, up off the ground. Yep. Um, it's very very different to Victoria, mm. um, and and but but bicycle network we ran the uh, inaugural Newcastle Challenge. It had um, some incredible constraints put on it by the authorities, yep. um, but really it was a trial run. Yep. I mean the the authorities wanted to see um, whether we were capable yep. of riding uh, of running an event of that size. They're aware that we do around the bay in Victoria. Yep. But it's been widely acknowledged that running an event in Sydney yes. is different. Well, it's, it's tougher. It's, it's harder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of good organisations have tried mm. um, to get things up off the ground. Um, but it, it's Bicycle Network's commitment to it that's going to see us, see yeah. us through. Yeah. Um, so we had the inaugural one uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, it rained pretty much as soon as we got off the plane. Mm. Um, but... Uh, the, the 200 cyclists that did get the opportunity to take it on yeah. um, really took on the challenge, um, enjoyed it. Yes. There's, there's, without a doubt, there's, there's, um, there's development that needs to happen on this event. Yeah. Um, in the inaugural event, we, we were capped with the amount of riders we were allowed to take. We were restricted on the roads we were allowed to use. Um, and we were given very, very limited support. Yeah. Um, what, what we do want to work on is working with the councils. Yes. The councils have been fantastic. Yep. They've, they've got behind the event. Yep. Um, but, but know that we need to have the, the authorities engaged as well. Yes. Um, and we're working on that. We're building on that. Very exciting for us. We're about to open a, a Sydney office oh, right. um, at the moment. So um, with Bicycle Network going national, yes. uh, a, a Sydney office, so that we can start to work on, on the programs like the happiness cycle that we have that's, that's right. taking okay. off in New South Wales. Yep. And then um, start ride to, to work. Yeah, ride to work, ride to school. Yeah. All those things are national um, programs, but we need to have a presence yes. in, in, in Sydney and the major capitals yeah. as well. So um, very exciting for us that we'll be, um, you know, probably the next couple of months we'll have the team started up there. 
um, and start to deliver for, for New South Wales what Bicycle Network has done for Victoria um, because the, the, the demand is there. They, they're so keen. There's so many people cycling up there. Um, it's exciting to be able to do the work we do in Victoria as well as start an event up there. Um, um, I really look forward to, you know, in five years' time to be able to catch up with you and say, have a look at what's happening in New South Wales and have a look at what's happening in Sydney as well, like in, in not only regional New South Wales but in, the, in Sydney proper. So um, very exciting times, but it is going to be a challenge. Yeah. yeah, and that's fine. Look, I can understand New South Wales, they have their own challenges around infrastructure up there, don't yeah. they? That's, that's really, the, you know, one of the big issues that they have is just their infrastructure is quite restricted. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I can understand that the authorities want to, you know, just make sure that everything's safe, you know, and, and that's really the most important thing. So Yeah, and, and they don't have a cycling organisation um, uh, that's, that's state-run yeah. like, like we do in Victoria. So with, with Bicycle Network becoming, such, as I say, a, a, a national organisation, yeah. um, very exciting times. Yeah, very exciting. So, so just around the future, for, I mean, I know you've touched a little bit on it, the future for... For Bicycle Network, where do you see the organisation going in sort of the next five, next ten years? Well, we'd obviously love to see membership getting up to the hundred thousand mark. To go into six figures with membership, um, making such a, a that would be such a huge voice yeah. then. Yeah. Um, going national, we already work with um, uh, Bicycle Tasmania, um, Bicycle Western Australia, Bicycle Queensland. Uh, really keen to work in New South Wales, as I just yep. spoke of. Um, and, and, and start to become the voice for, for um, bike riders for yeah. Australia. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the exciting thing. Get the membership up and, and, and really get that reach out to um, uh, broader more Australia. People, yeah. Yeah. More people riding more bikes more often. That's right. Yeah. Really go back to our, 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 our first principles. Yeah. Um, we're working on new events. We've got a new event that we're going to launch for next year. Which is very exciting. It is very exciting. Um, and, and there's a number of other ones in the pipeline right. as well. So if you ask me what the next five years look like, at the moment we've got four events. Yeah. I'd like to think sort of around that 2020 mark. Yeah. We've got more like 10 events. Yeah, right. Um, and, and same thing again. They're, they're more out um, wider in Australia, getting greater reach yeah. um, for yeah. all of Australia. Yeah, fantastic. Look, Darren, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come down uh, and, no worries. and have a chat to us. It's been awesome. I love working with you guys, and I know that you do fantastic work. I've seen it firsthand. The organisations and the events that you run are just fantastic. So, you know, I wish you all the best, and I love being involved in what you're doing. Oh, great. So, you know, I just, I just can't wait to see what is going to happen in the next five or ten years with this organisation and what we can do with cycling for Australia. Yeah, it really is a great time. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Good on you, David.